Today I'm going to teach you how you can make materials in Blender with nodes and get a really nice solid, fairly realistic building block to start out your materials with. Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'd like to share with you how I set up the basis for nice realistic materials in Blender. And if we hop over to shading, you can see here it's a fairly simple setup, and it relies heavily on textures. Now I'll go into building this node in a second here, but first of all, let's talk about textures real quick. So where do you get textures? Well, I know of a few pretty great sites, and I'll make sure I link them in the description here. But first of all, we got public domain textures. These are all completely free, and they've got a lot of nice maps that you can work with. So it's not just a color map, you've got the normals and the roughness and all that good stuff. And second up, we have CC0 textures, and that is similar. These are all public domain, completely free, and you can use them however you want. If we take a look here, you can see some really nice realistic stuff going on here. And I think the leader and the free Patreon-supported textures is Texture Haven. And if you take a look at these real quick, you can really see they are pretty dedicated to quality what they're doing here. Now, once again, these textures have all the maps that you would ever want. You can just look at these immediately before you even download anything. But if you're really serious about getting super high quality textures, which I'm not even that serious yet, there is always Polygon and your prices company. And for that, you actually have to pay money. Personally, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not that serious. But as a hobbyist, you can start at $12 a month. It's not really that bad. So that's a few different places you can get textures from. Let's take a second here and build up this basic material that I was talking about. And I'll show you how that works. So I'm gonna delete that. Let's get our default cube in here and go edit mode, right click and subdivide that maybe three times, something like that. And I usually like to start out with a cube and then just go shift alt s and then drag my mouse to the right and that will create a nice quad sphere for us to work with. Now once we get that set up, let's just go right click and shade smooth and control one or two, we'll add some subsurface modifier just to make things look nice for us. Now, if you're in the shading tab here with me, you can click new material. And I know shading nodes can be kind of intimidating for a lot of people because like, look at all these crazy sliders and everything, but I'll try and take it a little bit slow for you and just kind of walk you through how I would set up a material like this. So first of all, let's start importing in our textures. So I'm gonna go shift A and texture, image texture. And we've got this little texture node here, that's great. I'm just gonna go open. I've got this texture here. I'm just gonna use this. Start with something that says diffuse probably. Of course, coming from different websites, they're probably gonna have different tags and be labeled differently, but I'm gonna start with the color map, which is often called the diffuse. Then I'm just gonna go shift D, duplicate this texture and go open once more. Let's see, we're probably also gonna want roughness as well as the bump map, which you can find here. And let's duplicate that one more time and open up our normal map. Now I think these textures will do us just fine. If you want to see things a little bit bigger, you can just go control space and that will full screen that window. And we got all this great stuff here and we're just gonna plug that right into this principled BSDF. So the easiest one is just the color, just drop color into color. And then we've also got roughness, which under color space, you probably want to set to non-color since this isn't a color map. Then you can just grab that color output and drop that right into the roughness input. For our bump in normal maps, that's going to be a little bit more complicated. So let's just mix those together real quick here. I'm gonna go shift A and go down to vector, normal map, and drop that there, as well as vector and bump. Now what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna mix them together with the bump node here. So let's drag our bump, make sure it's non-color once more, and drag that into height of the bump node. And then the normal just goes right into the normal. And then this normal just goes right into that normal. And for our normal map here, I'm just gonna drag the color into this normal map node. We can leave the strength at one probably. And then for our bump node here, we're probably gonna wanna turn this strength down a little bit. Okay, so this is the basics of our setup. If we go Control spacebar once more and go into the rendered view with Z and then rendered. You can see that the material certainly is coming along here. Now this looks pretty good because our cube was already UV unwrapped. If you take a look in the material preview, you can tend to see a few little seams going on, but it's not too bad. So we really didn't have to do anything for UV unwrapping in this situation. But say you don't want your material to just be on a 
smooth sphere that's already been UV unwrapped. Say you want to texture something like this arch here. If we go Alt G, I'm going to grab that and move that into the middle of the world. Let's take this material and apply it to this arch here by selecting the arch and then selecting the object with that material and going Control L and materials. Okay, it's got kind of the same color, but we can't really see any detail at the moment. And if we go into rendered view, it's still pretty bad looking. And the reason why this looks so terrible is just because it doesn't have any UVs. So if we go into edit mode and look at the UV editing tab, there is nothing going on here, but that's completely fine. Honestly, I don't really want to unwrap this because that would be a nightmare. So let's hop back into our shading tab, and then I'll just show you how you can get around doing any UV unwrapping on this. Now a quick word here, UV unwrapping definitely has its place, but when you have crazy meshes like this, I think I'll pass on that. So if we zoom into one of these little texture blocks here, you can see there's one input and that is vector, and that's usually where we would put our UV data in. And a simple little trick to get that working really quickly is just going Control T, and that will only work if you have Node Wrangler enabled in the preferences, add-ons, and just type in node. There it is. Give that a little bit of a check mark and you're all set. So control T will set you up with a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And right now our texture coordinate is coming in from UV, so let's switch that to generated. And our mapping node isn't always necessary, but sometimes it's pretty handy. So I'm going to grab these and just move them back here a little ways. And eventually, we're going to want all of these vectors to go into that vector, like this. Cool. If you want to clean this up a little bit, you can hold shift and right click and drag through all of these. And that will just give this little dot here. I don't know. I think that looks cool sometimes. So right now, if we hit control spacebar and take a look at it, you can see it's kind of working. But there's some pretty strange stuff going on on our mesh right now. So let's hop back into our shader editor real quick and take a look at these texture coordinate nodes once more. So right now our issue is that it says flat here and that just means generally that it's going to be projecting the texture from the top down and if you look at it from the top down it's okay but if you look at it from anywhere else it's going to be all stretched. So what we want to do is switch this texture coordinate to be box so that it is projecting from all different sides of the mesh. Now that can have a few harsh transitions sometimes where it goes from projecting from the top to projecting to the side or projecting from the bottom. So what I like to do a lot of the time is turn up my blend value and that will get rid of most of my seams. Now the downside to turning this all the way up is you just get a whole bunch of blurry mush. So I like to keep that kind of low but not at zero. Now we have to do that for all of these. So what I'm going to do real quick here is hold my mouse over this blend value and hit control C. And now when we move on to the next one and go box and control V with our mouse over that value, that will paste in the exact same value just to keep things consistent. Let's do that for the rest of these textures here. And there you go. So this is our basic material setup. If we take a look at this arch now, we've got some nice textures going on. And with this technique and the free texture libraries I mentioned beforehand, you can really get quite a bit of mileage. One last tip, if we look at the top of this, you can see a lot of it is kind of stretching. And if you go control A and then apply the scale, sometimes that can fix it. But as you can see, that didn't in this case. So one thing I do to fix that is if we go into material preview so it's faster, we can grab this mapping node and take a look at our scale and it'll either be the X or Y, I'm guessing. Yeah, so if we turn up the Y scale, that will really crunch it up. And it's already crunched up, so let's turn the Y scale down to something below zero. If you look at like a 0.29, something like that, then we get something that's a lot nicer looking. So there you go. That is my basic material setup for what I usually do most of the time when I want something that looks slightly realistic. And of course you can go crazy with this. You can select everything and go control G and turn that into a group and hit tab. And then you've got this little guy here, which you can just deploy anywhere if you hit shift A and group. You can drop that node group into any material and you'll have this really nice stone shader. And you can mix and match and all sorts of fun stuff, but I digress. 
So that pretty much sums up this tutorial. If you found it helpful and you'd like to see other tutorials like this one, there is a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements. And when you click that, it will actually add you to my email list. And I'll make sure the first thing I send you are some hydraulic kit bash elements for Blender. And then in the future, whenever I post a video, I just mail out to that list and make sure everybody's up to date on what's going on. But yeah, that pretty much wraps this video up. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.